From our CSTV Fieldhouse here in Manhattan, Stony Brook University is a quick drive through the Midtown Tunnel and along the Long Island Expressway. The route seems easy enough to follow, but imagine making that drive without the use of street signs or written directions. To do so would give you a sense of what Stony Brook Jr. nose tackle Brian Carp goes through every day. You see, Carp is severely dyslexic to the point where the written word doesn't register in his mind. So while chasing quarterbacks has always come easy to the six foot three, 255 pound lineman, the ways in which Carp thrives academically have come as a surprise to everyone that knows him. Greg Amsinger now with more. Now the one that we have in the United States is the cognatic system. Now do you remember? Yeah, that's when it goes through the mother's mother's father and the father's father. So right, it goes everybody. through everybody. In third or fourth grade, uh, I started to realize that uh, things are more difficult for me. You know, just I was able to understand everything, but when we were trying to do readings, I had a lot of difficulty reading. They finally realized I was really highly dyslexic. It's, I couldn't read past the fifth grade level right now. And my writing is much lower than that. People have an expectation, but because Brian has this invisible disability, he presents himself in such a way that people just don't realize it, but yet he is so disabled. Sometimes the letters are inversed and flip around, but I, I, don't, no, I don't notice that, you know? To me, it just looks like something that is unrecognizable. You know, I've been in a restaurant before, and I couldn't read the menu, you know? And I'm just, and I try to explain to someone, you know, just go through some of the things with me, just so I can try to find out what to, what to eat, you know? He has never learned how to decode the written word, so therefore he cannot read and he cannot write. He's got a really good memory for certain things. For other things, uh, it was a long time before Brian could remember his telephone number. And he's always developed a, a system of kind of like graphics or hieroglyphics. I mean, he'll put things on his calendar that will be uh, memory joggers for him. A little to-do list. Uh, one was uh, by dad's birthday present. So it was B-Day and a little birthday cake. Not a great artist, but you know, I can get the picture. Second one was uh, call Chim, so it's a phone and uh, Chim's name. And the uh, third one was laundry, so I, I'm not sure how to spell laundry, so I put L and a uh, you know, shirt and a pants. Carp spends much of his day with a team of tutors who help him prepare for every exam, all of which he takes verbally. His teammates, meanwhile, help Brian learn a defensive scheme as challenging as any class. I get the playbook every week of the new plays are going in, and I get I get confused if I stare at it. To sometimes it just I get very confused, you know, especially the plays that are very similar. So I, we really got to walk through on the field a lot. I need to get a lot of reps at all the plays. Oh! My other defensive line there next to me, uh, and they'll you know they're like Brian, you're slanting to the left, you're slanting to the right, you know. So, the game. Sometimes you forget it. You forget that you even have people out there. So you just like just yell his name, and he knows he's going the wrong way. So he'll just go the other way. Yeah, left and right's fine. The only reason I know it now, and when I was younger, I didn't know my right from left. Is now I know I have a, I have a scar on my right finger, and I can just feel, and that, that's why I know that's my right hand. I remember his high school coach saying to me when I visited with him that you know he's going to be at times frustrating. But, you know, on the field, Brian brings intensity to the game that is really remarkable. Carp led Stony Brook in sacks last year, and while his preseason All-American status has garnered him much attention, it is his unlikely place on the Stony Brook honor roll that has become a newfound source of pride. I can't even operate a computer by myself. So my, one of my roommates, you know, one of the football guys, he, I was like, you think we can check my grades online? It was a 3-0, and I, I was, you know, I was ecstatic. I couldn't believe that. Then I went down to the football offices, all the coaches knew I had a 3-0 and they all, you know, jumping on top of me and, you know, messing around with me, you know, a scholar and all that kind of stuff. Something about Brian that overcomes the, any challenge, I mean, it is mind-boggling sometimes for us to, he attends a university and does well, plays football. I've almost taken it for granted that Brian will succeed and do well. I put double the amount of hours in a day that someone puts in, in schoolwork, you know? It was unbelievable to realize, you know, all the work you put into a semester, you did it all for a purpose, you know? On the honor roll, Brian and the rest of the Stony Brook Seawolves currently 5-4 and four on the year and will wrap up the regular season this weekend on the road against Iona. The college basketball season begins tonight here in New York with the Coaches vs. Cancer Classic.